Hey YouTube. So I went to a IDPA practice match yesterday. Really good time. It's friggin' cold. Live in Massachusetts, I'll tell ya. It's the end of March, it's almost April, right? It was damn, damn cold. Uh, I was hoping to film it, but honestly, uh, the wind, about 20 mile an hour winds, wasn't happening. Blow the tripod all over the place. In fact, a lot of the a lot of the stages were getting blown over by the wind. It was uh, it was pretty intense, uh, including including steel plates. So this is what I shot there. Beretta 92 FS Inox, which means stainless steel, basically in Italian. Let's just uh, safety check the weapon. There's nothing in the magazine. Well, nothing in the chamber. Drop the hammer. Firearm safe. It's a really nice pistol for IDPA. Uh, very reliable. Having said that, uh, I had a reliability issue yesterday, not firearm related, but um, uh, cartridge related. Of course, the Beretta is a 9mm. It's a big 9mm, big frame. Uh, you need, you know, if you don't have at least large size, if you don't wear gloves that are at least large size, I think you might have a problem with this. It's a big, chunky frame um, because of the 15 round magazines they're meant to help, the double stack magazines. Really reliable, but it's nice and big, so there's very little muzzle flip. Sight radius is nice for accuracy, and um, it's great. Now, the reliability issue came from a blazer aluminum cased round that seemed to, uh, in that particular box, there seemed to be several that, um, for whatever reason, left the factory not crimped properly and um, had an issue with them. And one of, it, one of them actually caused me a failure to neutralize. That's, that sucked. Um, and a buddy of mine there happened to be, you know, he's a great guy, but a super gun nerd, uh, and carries calipers with him. And um, you know, it was pretty pretty quickly determined that those rounds were out of spec. So I got to call um, my friends at Blazer and tell them uh, he sold me a box of ammo um, out of spec. Is it interesting though? Because you look at the lot number. Um, uh, maybe I'll do a separate video on this, but if you look at the lot number, just random luck, I think I must have went into a different box at the gun shop, and, and that's the only box that I had um, that had that lot number, so there's something peculiar about that lot. Anyway, that's the way life goes, right? If you're going to shoot competitively, the lesson is um, buy better ammunition. Um, but this is just a practice club match, so it was fun. So I want to go through... Um, a little bit. This is kind of a, a rambling video. This rambling is really what I do best. So let's break down the Beretta. Simple. I pull the hammer back. There's a button on this side. A button on this side. All you have to do is press, press in here. Yeah. This button. All right. Pull the lever down. And there you go. Guns apart. Simple. Couldn't be easier, right? Uh, you take out your recoil spring and guide rod. Then you can take out your barrel. And um, the locking lug you got to fiddle with. Some people don't take them out at all. You should take it out and clean it. And there's the locking lug. It's good to check it for wear. And my standard MO for cleaning a gun is to take your cheap ass paper towels, wipe them down, wipe down the outside of all the parts, and um, get as much crap off as you possibly can. And that's, that's really the starting point for me. Once I get that done to the barrel, I'll spray a cleaner in there. The cleaner I'm going to use today is this stuff, Ezox. Uh, it's really good. Uh, this is sort of, in my mind, a modern ballistop. Really nice. So I just give that a good dosing. You can hit the outside too. It cleans very well. It's also got great um, corrosion protection. So all the parts that are reasonably clean hit with that. 
the guide rod is pretty simple. We'll get back to that. And then just wipe down the slide of the gun with your paper towel. Get the majority of the stuff out, particularly um, where the rail meets the slide. Uh, it's very, it's just, this, this step, all it does really is make your life a little bit easier when it comes to uh, some finer cleaning. Okay? That's reasonably good. Now this gun, you can see, this is about how dirty it is. So the ammo is pretty clean. I shot um, probably about 150 rounds yesterday between goofing off and then uh, shooting IDPA. So ammo isn't bad. And actually, if you don't over lubricate the gun, it, you, know, you can see here in the frame, if you don't over lubricate the firearm, uh, you get it just in the right spots. It doesn't become really a mess. That red stuff you see there on the rails is grease. We'll get back to that probably but here's the product. Um, the Shooter's Choice All-Weather Grease. I like grease on the rails anywhere metal really is going to rub extensively on metal. Grease on the rails, everything else gets some kind of lubricant. But really the frame, again, we just wipe all that out. Um, yesterday was really um, weather. It was a nice sunny day except we were getting uh, lots of wind we got lots of mud, so you're dropping magazines in the mud. Um, hopefully they weren't too bad, but um, yeah, it was actually you had to really watch what you were doing in terms of running the course, the course of fire, because it was uh, really slick from all the mud uh, and the, the snow melt going on. We'll just let that sit for a bit, okay? Barrel's all set. Get rid of paper towel number one. Hit the inside of the slide with some Ezox. Okay, let that sit for a second. Now, the first thing I do is generally get the parts that aren't so dirty. And all you really have to do is um, take a patch, uh, clean your guide spring rod. This isn't rocket science, it's gun cleaning. If it was rocket science, um, we'd all be in trouble. Uh, so, I watch a lot of, while I'm doing this, this is fairly obvious, just take your guide spring rod. And you know, by the way, while you're cleaning your pistol, not a bad idea to inspect things. So that's, that's clean. Move that over to the clean section. Get the locking lug. The locking lug really needs nothing more than uh, a wipe down and uh, a lubrication. We're cleaning it with uh, with Ezox, which will dry and be a dry lubricant. Now, is it the best lubricant in terms of um, you know is it going to protect uh, the metal from galling? Probably not, but it's got this uh, great anti-corrosive property to it, uh, and I think and it's really good about cleaning, uh, getting grime and nasty crap off your pistol so I think it has some properties that are really actually quite good uh, in terms of lubricants we'll get to them in a minute you grab yourself a nylon brush okay this one it's two-headed nylon brush you've all seen these right just brush out the frame loosen up some of the crap now one thing about the Beretta design is there's lots of little spaces where junk gets in there and you, you really want to clean it quite well particularly get all that grease off the rails because it one thing about grease which is definitely true is it will collect um, crud for lack of a better term and um, so you gotta really be pretty on top of your pistol maintenance a lot of um, other lubes are less apt to collect it and, and retain things like sand and, and dirt. So a less likely like CLP, in my opinion, is pretty good about avoiding um, collection of things like sand and grit. So all I'm doing here is taking a kind of a nasty patch. You know, you can for 
general wiping down, yes, you can use a dirty patch to get most of the bulk of the crap off of them. There's nothing wrong with that. And then you got to go over it with a cleaner patch. It's just kind of it's more efficient. You can get these gun picks. They're plastic, so they can't scratch the firearm. They come in all different shapes and sizes. But if you just use them in together with a um, with a, a cleaning patch, you can really get into spaces that are hard to get. Don't get a screwdriver, wrap a patch around it, and go at it. That's just going to cause you to scratch your firearm. Unless you really don't care about scratches, then by all means, knock yourself out. And after all, it's your it's your hard-earned money. If you want to um, scratch your gun, go ahead. I actually know a guy that um, was really anal about maintaining his uh, his vehicles, uh, and even so, that crazy bastard would, uh, when he'd get his new car, scratch it because he figured that. Uh, it's going to get scratched anyway, and that would kind of calibrate him to the eventual pain of realizing that somebody ran the shopping cart into the side of your new whatever it is that you're driving. This is the most difficult, where the locking lug meets the frame, is the most difficult area for the Beretta to clean, and um, it, it just is because it's hard to get to, get to it. Now, firearm cleaning, you should, you should, oh, well, isn't it true that in life you should kind of do the best job you can with whatever you're doing? The more people actually behave that way, maybe we'd uh, have a general improvement in our societal sort of interactions and well-being and economy. But anyway, you don't have to go completely insane. Uh, every single time, especially if you're going to take out your gun and fire it. My father was a World War II veteran. His rule of thumb is if you shoot it, you clean it, and you clean it well enough that your drill instructor won't make you go clean the toilets with a toothbrush so you understand the meaning of cleaning. Um, yeah, so that that's basically where I'm coming from. I kind of always have that ingrained in my head that it's great to go shooting as long as you understand that what your responsibilities are in terms of weapons maintenance. Now YouTube is interesting. I've been watching, I've been doing, uh, or got interested in watching YouTube for, for uh, a couple of reasons that I'm not even going to bother going into. Let me digress. How do you clean the magazine? Well, I just stuff a rag up there, or you can stuff a rag down there. Just take your rag, stuff it through after you hit it with some cleaner. And I wouldn't use anything that's really nasty here. And, and by the way, don't use a bore cleaner to clean the frame of the gun. That's uh, got some corrosive, usually ammonia-based stuff in it that uh, is, is not the greatest thing to get on plastics. For instance, like grips. And a lot of firearms, you can the grip um, is not is not solid. As a matter of fact, and you can, for instance, you won't be able to see it here, but you can actually see the grips in here. You don't want to really start dissolving them. And you can actually see if you don't, you got to clean your magazine well. Crap gets in there, especially when you're dropping dirty magazine magazines into the onto the dirt, and you're putting them back into your firearm for the next stage. There's definitely going to be crap that gets built up in there, no doubt about it. But um, that's why we clean them. Okay. That's reasonably clean. So well, there's a clean, there's a pretty clean frame. A couple spots in here. So I've been watching YouTube for a while. I I noticed that a lot of people are into their own, doing their own gunsmithing. Some of the people are really knowledgeable. I'm not talking about things like putting a grip on a gun. That's I'm talking about when you change a firing mechanism, you change um, you change uh, critical components to operation, like uh, trigger pull, that kind, those kinds of changes. I think when you do that, you ought to be real careful. Make sure you really know what you're doing. And if it's something you want to do, maybe you should uh, go have some, but don't believe YouTube videos, including mine, 
um, you know, make sure they're correct, do your fact finding, because um, I've actually been at an IDPA match, not the re most recent one, where we had a pistol come apart because somebody decided to put an, ex um, an extended uh, uh, breakdown lever on it and um, fudged it up pretty bad and uh, the pistol came apart on him during a, during a, a stage. That was pretty nerve-wracking for everybody involved, I can assure you. I think um, IDPA is kind of my new favorite thing to do. It really is. I just find it to be uh, really enjoyable. If you have a lot of money invested in pistols, if you're interested in becoming competent with pistols, if you're interested in becoming competitive, if you're interested in not being competitive, just um, going out and having a good time, it's a great sport. There's a Colleen Beretta 92 slide. Doesn't take that long, does it? So I've been babbling on for 17 minutes now, so I'm going to edit the hell out of this video. Now here we go, cleaning the slide. Again, just take some patches you want to go through and really get the rails. That's the most one of the most important things get in there and get all the black out of it all the all the you know burnt powder and uh, carbon and all that crap your breech face should be clean and you want to really focus in on this area behind the extractor let's see if you can see it right here uh, right here get behind that extractor the way to do that is <coughs> to get one of these little picks. Again, stick your patch in there. And uh, just go around and clean it really well. So again, getting back to YouTube um, gun vids, I find the gun community really kind of interesting. Lots of really nice, knowledgeable folks on it. Lots of real wankers on it as well. Um, seems to be a general lack of respect for other human beings. You make a comment somebody disagrees with and they can't have a civil discourse about it. They have to turn it into some pissing matches. They'll, you know, do shit like leave a comment on your channel, uh, get really nasty. Um, and most of them are just children. They don't know what they're talking about. Um, some of them are surprisingly some of the larger gun gun, uh, gun channels that'll without a without a without a second thought uh, exhibit that behavior. I think it's kind of pointless if you claim you're part of the gun community. I think you ought to really be part of the gun community. Understand what being a in a community is, and understanding that in life. Not everybody has to agree with you all the time, and if you want to be successful, and if you want to, and, and I mean successful, not in terms of how much money you, you know, have direct deposited into your account every month from your employer, but I mean successful just in terms of living a good, healthy life. Um, you need to understand that not everybody agrees all the time. It's okay to disagree, and just because somebody doesn't agree with you doesn't mean they're calling you stupid or you're, you know anything particularly derogatory. Just my take on it. The other thing I find really funny about YouTube is, um, particularly in the gun community, it's it's male dominated, right? Mostly guys. Uh, and we see uh, women getting involved, which is awesome. But, you know, I don't, I don't think you should get a free pass just because you're a female. I really don't. You know, if you're going to get out there and do gun vids, don't act like an expert if you don't know what you're talking about and give people bad information. Because believe it or not, folks, people um, take some of this that we do on YouTube to heart and go try to, and then make decisions about purchasing or, you know, self-defense decisions based on what you're saying. And I got to tell you that in a lot of ways, that's really that that's scary. I think it's really scary. 
there's a lot of people out there that are making uh, statements about self-defense that really, man, I don't know what they're thinking. Lots of times it's wrong. Uh, and it really conflates, you know, what this Second Amendment's all about uh, quite a bit. So take it with a take it with a certain degree, uh, you know, a grain of salt, so to speak, and just be aware of the fact that um, a lot of people, especially people trying to hawk products on YouTube, it's one thing to do a, a, a review, but it's another thing to just flat out claim something's awesome when, you know, a blind man can see that it's it's not awesome. There's problems with the design of, of um, that particular product. And just because you got it for free or somebody sent it to you because you're a big YouTuber, I, I think it's really kind of lame to go out and make extraordinary claims about pieces of equipment that are obviously kind of crap. And um, especially if you actually haven't even used it and, and tested it. Uh, a couple people that I've interacted with on YouTube that I, I really think are uh, pretty good folks. One of them is I Think You Really Suck. He's from Massachusetts. Um, I'm from Massachusetts. So that automatically makes us uh, brethren mass holes. And you know, we live in a state that's you know, I'm so jealous when I hear you guys from other states, in a good way. I mean, I, I, I'm happy for you, actually. You guys from other states, you know, talking about what they can purchase. Well, not here. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, yeah, the other thing that's really weird about YouTube sometimes is you you make a video. After all, it's your time, your, your money, your effort. And you might make some political commentary. And then somebody will get on there and say, leave the politics out of it. Yeah, you know what? Go watch another friggin' video. You know, why don't you make a video if you don't like people, you know, expressing their opinions? By the way, it's all opinion, right? All right, so there's a clean slide. Uh, nice and shiny. You can actually feel the Ezox on it. You know, again, it's a modern ballastol. I've not used ballastol before. So um, I can't directly compare them. Some things are really hard to get off of the gun, particularly carbon. Carbon, like, you know, on the face of a revolver cylinder, and you'll get buildup on any pistol, and much lesser extent on the automatic. But you'll get it, like, around here. So I'll show you something that'll take that right off in about two seconds. Um, so anyway, fellow mass holes, um, I think uh, I think he really sucks a good guy. There's not a lot of other mass holes uh, out there that are still making videos. <laughs> anyway, let me put it to you that way. So then we just run it, run a patch down a down the barrel that's been soaking in Ezox. Now what I like to do again is spray it again. Okay. Hit it again. Straightforward, right? Now, this isn't for everybody. I guess some people agree with this, some people don't agree with this. But you can take a rod, take a phosphor bronze brush. These are bronze, they're not going to scratch the barrel. You got to be careful with the rod, though, you don't want to be out of line with it. Keep it centered. And then just go down and back, and I do it about 10 times. And you really want to clean that chamber. That's where you're going to get problems and sort of, you know, failure, failure to cycle properly, failure to chamber. Not so much failure to eject, but you'll get, you'll get malfunctions there. So you want to avoid that simply by just cleaning it properly. Now what you can do is take a patch, wrap it around your brush, okay? Soak it with the Ezox, do that off the camera, spray it all over the place, and run that through, nice and straight. 
and that's what your patch looks like right there. Pretty filthy, right? And then you can come back. When you're coming back from the from the muslin, be super careful. You don't want to. Uh, you never want to scratch the what is essentially the muzzle crown. That's pretty clean. Look through the light here. Uh, we put our brush back. And then the easiest thing to do is take um, some Ezox soaked rags, push them through. And they should be real tight when they're going through. Now, in terms of what you push them through with, I like these a lot. The plastic tip, aluminum handle. This is all softer than the steel of a gun of a gun barrel, so uh, no worries there in terms of, gee, I might scratch my gun. So take another Ezox soaked rag or patch rather, push it through. And you want to keep doing this until you get a clean one coming out the other end. Okay. Okay. Quick note about gun cleaners. I've been telling you a lot about Ezox. There's lots of others that are on the market. You know, I won't go through them all. But um, a word of caution: don't don't waste your money. They all work. Every single one of them works. Uh, the, you know, this idea that some are better than others. It's I think, in my opinion. Uh, it's the differences are marginal. You know, we're not gonna. I'm assuming nobody's gonna store their gun, you know, in a swamp. So you know, rust prevention is relative. Um, you should just be aware of the fact that if you have guns in a gun safe, for instance, you should store your guns in a gun safe. If you don't, I really question your question you as a responsible gun owner especially in our society, you better be a responsible gun owner because there's, there's a lot on line. So, now I told you that you get some crud on, on parts of them that's hard to get off. It's basically burnt carbon. You can get a Wonder Cloth, okay? There's a few other makers. Uh, you, you really don't want to use this on a blued gun. You want to use this on stainless steel. Uh, but you can just take that cloth and then just wipe it right off comes right off. You know, put a little elbow grease into it, but not much really. There you go. Pretty clean, huh? Now, those are old nasty pieces we use them. Just keep it sealed up. They last a really long time. You just need a little bit. So there's your barrel. Gun's all clean. Now we do some lubrication. Told you this thing got a coating of Ezox, so I'm not worried about uh, you know, wipe down. The other thing Ezox does really well is keeps uh, fingerprints off your gun. So if you're fussy about the gun getting fingerprints all over it, Ezox will definitely prevent that. So to lubricate lubricate this, we're going to use this stuff. Let's get this in focus. Really good product. Shooter Choice All Weather High Tech Grease um, in a syringe applicator. And then we're going to use um, yeah. Where's my bottle of Militech. Let me go grab it. Okay, final cleaning step. Air compressor. Works great. Really good cleaning tool. It's a good idea to just get one. If you have one, nice and loud. Wow, that's loud. But what's interesting about that, when you hit the firearm after you just cleaned it with um, some serious air, you'll actually see right away how much uh, <coughs> cleaner is still on there. It'll come out of places, like on the barrette, it'll come out of here, which is the, the firing pin block. Uh, you'll see all that. But anyway, that's all I want to say. Lubrication. How do I lubricate it? I like Militech one. There it is. Um, but first what I like to do is take a squirt of grease, hit the rails, inside the rails, in here, right? In here. Uh, some grease, 
a little dab will do you. Don't get nuts. Okay, it shouldn't be, you know, like you're putting hair gel on to go out with your girlfriend or something. Just a little bit. Okay, a little bit in four spots. I put it in four spots, front and back, and we'll spread it out in a minute. The barrel, I like to get the lugs. Okay, just a little bit. Anywhere where it's apparent that metal contacts metal, a little group, little bit of grease is not a bad idea. Okay, then the frame of the pistol, we're going to get um, basically where the rails meet up at the farm. You can actually see that uh, this, this gun's been shot a lot. There's very little metal wear on it, though. That's a testament to how well Beretta fits together their pistols. They do a great job. And the fact that um, guns properly maintained, that's just all there is to it. Okay, That's it. That's it for the grease, folks. Spring, recall spring's not really been an issue. Now all you do is take a clean tooth uh, Q-tip. Uh, we'll use a short one. I like the, the wooden handle ones. And then just spread that out where the rail um, groove is. Spread it out. You know, you don't have to worry about it. When it rack it, it's going to spread out even more. Then what I like to do, that's done. And I really recommend that you do this, is go ahead, take some Militech, one drop at the end of the rail and let it run down. The other thing that's nice about grease though, by the way, um, is that, just let it run down, is grease stays where you put it. Um, a small drop on your locking block, just rub, your fing rub it all around with your fingers. Grease stays where you put it, which is, um, which is really different than uh, Actually, I missed one spot here in uh, on the barrel, right where the locking block uh, meets up with it. Put some grease in there. Grease stays where you put it, so it's nice. Refit your locking block back into the barrel. Um, uh, one more thing. A couple drops of Militech on a clean patch. You don't need a lot here, folks. And uh, I just run it through the barrel once. And I don't bother wiping the excess off. It's irrelevant, in my opinion. Just gives you a nice little bit of lube in that barrel, which is really all you need. Lube that chamber, too. Lube that chamber. Isn't that, uh, isn't that an adult movie? Not that I would know, but I'm sure some of you would, right? Uh, pistol reassembly, barrel goes in, couldn't be simpler. Uh, make sure your locking lock lug is seated. There we go. Pops right in. Seats, if you don't know how it seats, um, see me after class. Then the reassemble the firearm. Let's just do it this way. Here we go. Um, hammers, I keep the hammer back, made it up like so. Bring it all the way in, push it, flip the lever, breakdown lever, rack it, fire it, keep your finger on the trigger, rack it back, check your reset, fire. Okay? Works great. You're going to get some grease oozing out of here. Uh, just wipe it down, no problem. Pretty. Uh, final step in the cleaning process. What I'd like to do, I'm sure a lot of you do, take uh, your rag, take your favorite cleaner, um, spray it on the rag, and you just go over the outside of the gun to give it kind of a nice finished look. This is stainless steel, um, so you don't really need to, need to um, 
fuss with it that much. There you go, you have a brand new shiny looking Beretta 92. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, nice firearm. I recommend them for IDPA. Alright, thanks for watching. Appreciate your support.